No, I need a five minute break. Everything's on. Okay, Marion County Commission meeting, uh, call it order, January 16th, 2024. Um, and we'll start with the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, it looks like Commissioner Mueller has his microphone unmuted. Okay. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yep. All right. I can hear you. Good deal. Sorry, I just wanted to shut that door. online. Nobody's in the room. Okay. Up and running. Yep, everything is up. All right. Um, we do have a couple people online but okay is there anybody online that would like to speak it's a public forum uh, now would be the time to unmute your mic and say anything you need to say okay the one is muted john your mic is unmuted you have something? Right. Not hearing anything. Okay. And then we want to go with the agenda approval. We need to add uh, Dave Mueller. Yeah, I'd just like to add a, a section so we can talk about the blizzard. At the end, or? Yeah, at the end would be great. Okay. Is there any other agenda items? No, that, I was going to add the same thing. Under, under landowner participation with R&B, Have something, but I will wait till all five commissioners is here. Okay. Not today, probably. Alrighty. Um. Alrighty. So with that, um, approve the agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda with the uh, addition. And I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we wanted to administrative. Okay. Oops, sorry about that. We do have some change orders here, so send those around. Mm -hmm. shift all around so we're a little closer to her now since we're we can get all tight here. <laughs> yeah. How's that gonna work with the administrator? Do we have to we're getting another piece of furniture. The chain another table and a chair like right here. Uh, 
I suppose we have an administrator will have to stand for the whole meeting. <laughs> I don't think that was, that was part of the deal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, it, recall, I don't recall a chair being provided <laughs> in the contract. <laughs> oh boy, we, we forgot something important there. <laughs> Yeah, there are quite a few change orders today. There's no snowmobiles being sold yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a couple tracks. Happy to get them out and use them out here in Kansas. Usually the one that I know of for sure, he goes to Colorado quite a bit. I got, I got family that's all got them. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I saw a snow machine out the other day. It's been years since yeah, I've seen one. Yeah. Back in the 70s and 80s, there was quite a few of them around. It's about every letter they can use them. Yes. That's just it. Up north, they don't seem to struggle with snow like what we do because they have it every year, so yeah. they've got equipment. Right. right. Yeah, they use them all winter up there. I if it has to be street legal like we have some of North, they got they got uh, little roads on the sides of the highways for them. Yeah, yeah. On little stop signs and crossroad intersections, yeah. and it's it's pretty neat. That's, how, neat. that's how some people get in and out of their house, leave the vehicle out on the highway yeah. or somewhere. True. <laughs> and then in the summer, that converts over to a side by side yeah. runway.
for a day with West Commissioners to be here to get rid of the stacks. So wait so long. <laughs> Shorten the signature. Yeah, yeah, some people, some people are lucky they don't have to sign all these. <laughs> Some of these, I wish they could combine them all in one sheet. Like some of them are combined, some of yeah. them is one item at a time. Yep. They're all one item at a time. <clears throat> but our system needs all of this work for this stuff. Uh, it just needs to. Oh man, shouldn't have signed that one. Oh, you should have. Uh oh. You can't sign this one. Yeah, we'll have to send it back around and wait for okay. somebody else to sign uh -huh. it. Yeah, I wonder when it's coming around. Stain. Everybody cramping. Look at it, it's all almost on fire. <laughs> you got a rider's cramp. Now, Chairman, I, I would, I, I goofed, I, I would like to have an executive session for personnel performance at the end of the meeting after the blizzard deal. I forgot to do that. Anybody got a problem with that? At least Randy moved closer. He's smart. You <laughs> sitting over there. Well, well it wasn't because Phyllis, you know. I mean, <laughs> she's, she's pretty sparky today. She is pretty sparky today. Uh, in your packets, you have the minutes of January 8th. Make a motion to approve January 8th minutes as written. You got a motion? Second. You got a second. All those in, or any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Or zero. Okay. Thank you. In your packet, you had the agreement for the high risk rural road project, which is for um, a portion of two ninetieth. I'd move to approve. All second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'll have everybody that's here sign the document. And Commissioner Mueller, if it's okay, I can use your stamp. 
That'd be great. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of the packet, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> Have some salary changes. All right. Now, I'm sorry if I slaughter any names. I'm really bad with them. <laughs> but we have a uh, Rodenbridge Blacktop, Jonathan Van Vitas, uh, new equipment operator one at 2,744 a month. Facilities and Tech Department, um, new department, Kobe Hayes at $7,917 per month, new Facilities and Tech Operations Director. Hmm. A county appraiser, we got Michelle Colinda, 1765 an hour. Rehired as part time appraiser two. I think Nikki will probably talk to you all about that when she comes up here. Um, so. She decided to come back for whatever need. <coughs> uh, County Sheriff uh, Byron McDonald, um, 2164 an hour, new deputy sheriff. Packet. You have pay application number three for the 1240 commercial remodel. And the amount of the payment due is $67,844.08. I make a motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? I just take note. I thought it was a little further along by the dollars. Still got a ways to go. I, that's going to be my question. Where do you think we're at? With the um, I can put you put that on the agenda for the next for next okay. meeting. Yeah. And it may wrap up really quick. I mean, you know, just, you know, in the world that we live in. Did you vote, or did you just do the motion in the second? Motion in the agree? second. So all those in favor? Aye. I think we can expect some overage. Oh no. I think it's going to hold back from any overage. Thank you. Construction stuff is. Yeah, the labor rates haven't really changed. It's just material. Materials, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Labor rates will have to go up eventually. Everybody's paying all this money to all the other fields. It eventually comes back to that too. Does 
just need to grab another document here to share since we have some people not in the room. Oops. Hopefully I'm not going to... See if my computer wants to cooperate. I apologize. <laughs> okay, maybe it's not going to. So I was going to try to share the um, the document, but. We do have, um, there was a verbal disaster declaration uh, because of the winter weather. Uh, that was done, and the, so this would be the, the uh, resolution 2024-03, which ratifies that, and it basically lasts seven days, which today is the seventh day. So, um, so here is that document. Tina, is it is it appropriate to do that since this we're already under a state? Is that yes, it is. Yeah. it is. That way, if there is any funding, you, you don't have one it, of these yourself. You can't qualify for any state funding. We may not use it, um, and then the next. So that that requires a motion and a vote to a, adopt that um, that resolution for the disaster declaration. Close to the, the motion to. Off the disaster reclamation or resolution, resolution. of 2024-03. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. And since that does expire today, uh, is the seventh day, um, I do have another one to extend it for seven more days, um, just in case we would need that. It's just kind of a proactive resolution which would be 2024-04 so it would extend the disaster declaration by one week. I'd make motion. that go ahead. go ahead Donna. you go for it. That's I'd make that motion go ahead and extend the disaster proclamation resolution of 2024-04 for seven more days. Second. The motion is a second. Any uh, other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. So again, it may not be needed, we may not, um, but it was just kind of proactive. Not take is that, there a seven day window on those, mm -hmm. all of them? Yeah, so yeah. We, we authorized the chairman to go ahead and make approval until we could have a meeting to ratify it. And generally they they do their- well, um, no, My question was, does it, does a disaster declaration always lasts seven days. Typically, by law, it's seven days unless you all set something different yeah. initially. So, I think during COVID, we were going a month at a time. Um, maybe longer. Yeah, maybe we longer. did have some in there for that lasted a long time. That until until revoked, basically, yeah. or superseded. Okay. Okay. I did send you all a uh, draft RFP for the construction manager at risk. Um, I did send that to the architect as well for him to review. I did not have any dates filled in on the last page, which was the proposed timeline. Um, I do have a projected or um, a timeline um, to incorporate this RFP into our original process. 
Um, this were, were uh, suggestions from the architect. So this is not the final timeline. This is something that you all can discuss and, and, um, and decide. I had a few things. Um, you lean forward. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'll go. Maybe you're going to cover it. All right. So on the construction manager selection, last line. I'm going to find it here. About the fees submitted. Yeah, proposed fees. Um, it's just to spell out what this word. General conditions and insurance, or no? It, that's the gross. Uh, that's the um, guaranteed maximum. Yeah, I thought the guaranteed price. maximum price was somewhere else. Um, that would be at the sixty percent level. Right. So. Um, it, it I'll just, clarify that. This would little, be. It's a little um, back and forth. Okay. Well, the intent is that that's the guaranteed maximum price that's submitted separately. Okay, and then. Uh, guaranteed maximum price. If if that's not the guaranteed maximum price, should being submitted separately in a sealed envelope. Mm -hmm. And then you also have somewhere else something else being submitted separately in a sealed envelope. And I'm just wondering, is that two different sealed envelopes? Is that is that one sealed envelope is just showing two different things that aren't. I'm um, not sure where you are, so I guess I'll look at it and see. But it, there's only supposed to be the RFP resubmitted and then the separate submission of the guaranteed maximum price. That's it. And then, so number eight on proposal requirements. So. We were just looking for the construction manager to to lay out a price at the sixty percent level. Yes. Or at thirty. Sixty. They they are supposed to do their guaranteed maximum price based on the sixty percent drawings. But so then we wouldn't select until after the sixty is available. No, we would select based on qualifications and then look at the price. So construction manager at risk is supposed to be a qualifications-based selection. So you review the qualifications and then, then um, select your, your so you've got construction your, manager and then look at the price they submit. You've got guaranteed maximum price due and then construction manager selection. The okay. your timeline. The timeline, so the... So if you were going to select... We select before the GMP is due. So the CM selection needs to be before the 60%. Yes. Or at the same time. Because we, because the thing that we're not, the thing that you would not be doing is looking at the guaranteed max. They, have, they would have time to put their guaranteed maximum price and submit that after uh, you see the six, it's simultaneous according to the proposed timeline that, that Chris gave me. So the selection, so if we have the RFP due on the 9th, that's for the qualifications. Oh, okay. and, the dates here and we, we review the it from the 12th to the 15th, we would potentially make a selection and I would want to know if the commission wants the full commission to select or if you want to authorize the committee to select because we may have to change that date unless you want to have a special meeting. Um, and th that's at the simultaneously to the 60% plans being available. So when the 60% plans are available, then the, whoever is selected would have additional time to submit the um, guaranteed maximum price. But I think that timeline is a little bit big. I don't know that, you need, that they would need um, all the way till March 4th to do that. But this, this here, it's, it's in different order, but your dates. Right. Yeah. And so then the 100% plans, the, whoever is chosen would help develop the 100% plans on the budget. So they've already and that done should that. be done by March 18th. Uh, construction could begin April 1st. So. Yeah, just 
construction manager selection, the performance fees should be, I think, should be spelled out a little bit better, so that way you have apples for apples. I'm sorry, say that again. Uh, the proposed fees should be spelled out uh, a little better on that, on the construction manager selection mm -hmm. part, just so that everybody is proposing the same fees. I'm not sure what those fees would be because what I, I was just going to put guaranteed maximum price should be submitted separately. So contractor fees. I don't know fees. that there would be any other fees. General conditions, uh, insurance. Um, yeah, I just I think. So if I just say instead of proposed fees, if I put guaranteed maximum price, should be submitted in a separate envelope. It's separately in a sealed envelope, and then have add the information on the timeline for well, that. It wouldn't be the construction manager selection isn't on the guaranteed maximum price. I thought it was on. I can take that out of there. I just drafted this, Jonah. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I've never drafted one like this before. And, and that's understandable. We're I, I, I totally understand. Mm -hmm. I, and, and I never have done it from the owner's side of things. I was just right. trying to be more thorough on that rather than just taking it for so granted as a sub. Select one before we know what they're going to charge. Yeah, that's how you do a, a construction manager seems, at risk. Seems a little oxymoron to me. It's a qualifications-based selection. I mean, that's and just... where the other one is a bid-based selection. So that's giving them an open check. I mean, uh, as far as bidding... You, you could they, probably narrow it down to two firms and then, you know, yeah. um, then consider fees if you change the timeline up. I'm not sure, but you have to c consider the qualifications or where well, what you have to use to rank them. Yeah, I just it seems to me like you pick one, and then they get to decide what they're going to charge. You can negotiate those fees. So if they come back with something outrageous, then you can say, "Sorry, we're not going to do that." Okay, Here's, okay as long as negotiate. we reserve the right, yeah, to accept or reject. Yeah, yeah. we do. Yeah, that's about the only way you can do it then. Yeah, and then the other it's, thing would be just making sure whatever's supposed to be in a separately sealed envelope. It's the yeah. only thing that I'm aware of is the, the GMP. So. So I can clarify that so wording. To got proposed fees. Yes. At the construction manager selection. We're going to have, I thought, somewhere down the line, after they get their bids for ZMIT and stuff like that, we have to approve that. Uh, they have to, like anything over a certain dollar amount, they have to bid, competitively bid. Yes. And you can see that, but you're not going to approve those, I don't believe. But they have to do that process and be able to document that. So that's on the second page under mm -hmm. uh, scope of services and where it says bidding. All bid packages over 20000 in accordance with the state statutes must be competitively bid. With this understanding, list the work that your company would likely bid uh, to accomplish with its own forces. So whoever is chosen could also bid on some of the work. Is, it, is that a standard figure, 20000 That's what I saw in um, some of the ones I looked at. Yeah. We can make it less I'm if you want. I'm just wondering on a smaller, maybe, I don't know if this is considered a smaller project than a lot of these things. Yeah, but a, if it is, it's a mid -range. I mean, maybe we should go with a smaller amount to bid. I don't know. What do you think, Jonah? Oh, I don't You're know. the one that's in the business. Yeah. I don't see any problem with that. Okay. I mean, sometimes under twenty grand, you, you're just you're just trying to fill in the guy down the street to come paint something for you, you know, just to get the job done. Yeah. I guess nowadays twenty thousand not very much. Back in my day, it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's still a lot. Well, to it's me. still quite a bit. I mean, you yeah. do a small house, electric, twenty grand. I mean, a small house. Uh, I, I just. The reason why I was leaning that way was after we'd selected the uh, construction manager that if he took bids from two or three companies for the cement, that we got to see that. You and do we get to see it. And, and, re and, and request and see why he picked. That's, so that's, yes. that's, that's part of it. Yes. They're, they're, they're there to help walk you through some of these. Yes, things. and save us some dollars. Yeah, or pick a higher quality and, and not at the bottom dollar. And sometimes bottom sometimes bottom. you get burned by picking the bottom dollar. Correct, correct, um, correct. I'm not going to deny that. We know that would have happened in a few projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, 
I just want to be able to, it's, it's just what I can't say, and we want to be able to look at our bids and verify them and stuff like that. And I, I was always under the impression from what I've heard of this construction management scene that they bring that to us and, and we look at it. So Either would it be the steel bid? After the fact. Well, they've got bids and we, we look at them. Yeah, but I mean, they've already bid them by the time we see them. That there's, there's some of the difference we're going to start to see between the construction manager at risk and uh, the design, bid, design bid, bid, build. Bid, build. bid build. Yeah. So bid build is more something you would have saw yeah. a number and then you would have had five of them to average and then and if they were all over budget you could throw them all out. We can't throw these out if we don't like. No, them. we could throw it. We could throw it out. I mean, we always have the option to cancel the project. Yeah. But there's always a fee assessed. Yeah. But we're still going to have to pay the architect already. So. Yeah. Well, the architect's paid. Yeah. And that would have happened neither way. Either yeah. way. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's that's a done deal when we sign that. Okay. Were there any besides the um, clarification on that section about the proposed fees and changing that? Um, there any? Is there anything else that? No, I mean, the dates are going to rectify the other things I had. So pre-construction services, construction manager surprise, preliminary cost estimate based on the conceptual drawing documentation. The guaranteed maximum price will be established at 60%. Um, you know, reading into that, uh, with the way the lines were before the dates, it was uh, how they're supposed to do that when the 60% right. was later. Right. So putting the dates in there does help. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and I can, I can send you this little highlighted thing. But yeah, that'd be good. But you've settled some of it, so. Or all of it, actually, I think. So we need, you want to move forward with this? Are you happy with when moving forward, or? Yeah, I mean, a few text, uh, a few text changes, and I'm good with it. Yeah. And the timeline. Uh, now, she did bring up the timeline being a little extreme, waiting for certain things. Right. So after we would potentially select the uh, construction manager, he has in here um, from February 15th would be a potential selection date. Um, we don't have a meeting on that day, actually. That's on a, that's a Thursday. Um, and you wouldn't have a meeting till the 20th. So... If you do want to, you know, I don't know if you want to authorize the committee to do that selection or if you want it to come to the full board, we either have to have a special meeting or push it to the 20th. But then he had it from the 15th all the way till March 4th for them to submit their their price. I don't know if they need that much time. I mean, maybe they do because they might have to start doing some of that bid process. So, Well, they need, usually it's a couple weeks because they're going to have to go out all their subs too. Right. They've never, ever even seen this and start right. getting prelim numbers. Mm -hmm. So maybe that is not a unreasonable time frame, but I would. I'm you shorten it up too much. You're going to be leak. Go back to lengthening it out again. Because if you go to like, if we um, do the selection on February 20th when you're all here for a regular meeting, that's actually five days later then um, that's basically a little, you would probably have to uh, go to March 5th, which is two weeks exactly, for them to submit that, or March 8th, and then approve it on Monday the 11th. I'd ask that we have a special meeting to make that approval, to keep the timeline moving. Yes, um, I'm, I'm in agreement. I would, I'd rather have the whole commission involved yep. okay. not just real you know then if, if things go bad it's not just on two people yeah everybody needs to see what we're doing and one thing i need to add in here i mean he's got the guaranteed maximum price due on the fourth but he doesn't have the um, approval of that by the board and so we would need to have that maybe i would ask that we do the um submission due on the first and then approval on the fourth or March for the guaranteed maximum price or by noon on 
the fourth and then approve at that meeting. Okay. So, okay, well that answers a few things. Whenever you're ready, if you're ready to approve it, then it would be great to have a motion to vote to approve it with whatever changes you would like. I would move to approve the RFP uh, on the new public health building with the text amendments as suggested by Commissioner Gehring and the timeline changes as discussed. Second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? Not all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Three in favor, <laughs> one against. Okay. All right. So we have that as being released today, and I will do my best. <laughs> it might be actually might be tomorrow. Okay. Some help or something different. Right. All right. I believe that was the last thing I had on the administrative. And then just what I was talking about, I sent it to you. So okay. that way, if you want to share it with them, that's I'm great. Not in trouble for. Thank you. So I um, do not have encumbrances for today. I'm, we're still reviewing the. December and we're still we, we still don't have December closed so we're waiting uh, well I'll present the encumbrances next week so. okay so that's what I have all right well thank you for all the work on that team. I appreciate it she held a hand up <laughs> <laughs> She did not. I, I, I specifically remember oh. that it was a, a major chore and undertaking she was going to have to yes. do. Uh, so, all right, we are a little behind schedule, but look, we're right up. Lou. Lou. All right, <laughs> catch us back up. Yep, I'll catch you. Yes. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. Well, thank you. It's a little chilly out there. <laughs> the senior doors are frozen shut. So I have a note for everybody to go to the back door. Oh, wow. Can't get them open. This is the first day I've taken my bed off. Oh, I bet. It's like a heat wave. Tomorrow I'm going to have a bathing suit. Sounds good. That's right. Yeah. It's eight. Glad we don't have a meeting. Don't send me, <laughs> don't send me any pictures. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I just wanted to touch base because I know at one time we talked about um, window putting a window in the office over there, and I did get a hold of um, um, Norma Klein. She went to the board there at the senior center, and I have the okay from them. So, um, and I know I know what I want to do. It, it's it's going to be pretty simple. It's going to be a hole in the wall and it's going to be um, well, <laughs> it's going to be a French door on the side just so that it opens opens that up it lets some light in on the inside of the building not the outside this but, is in your office uh-huh okay. yeah because right now it's so it's a hole so, yeah yeah so um, I know at one time you guys said well if, if they will approve it so I'm just making sure that I still have the okay. Yep. And I know I have to go out for the bids. So I've got a couple people in mind or I, any suggestions. Maybe you. Is it? What about your budget? Get somebody local to do it. Well, yeah. yeah, it's going to be, yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure it's within the budget. Okay. All right. Um, the, door, um, the door is not going to be expensive. Um, We're doing a door? No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's a the French window. Door it's a French door closer. window. Closer. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a bifold window blind. It's okay. going to go this way. Security okay. purposes, is that any non safer than just well, regular? As long as you have tempered glass and reinforced 
glass. Well, the door is going to be that door. It's not going to be that way. It's going to go this way. And it's just a window. It's just a window to let light come in. It's not going to be at eye level. So it'll be, I should have brought my phone over. I have pictures of what I, of what I want to do. I'll send that over to Tina. That's fine. I'm, I don't feel like I need to nitpick what kind of window is going to be. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at security. security. That's, yeah. that's all I was looking at. So somebody can get to your computer. Yeah, yeah true, true. Yeah, we have that resource now. Yeah, we do have a resource. We can bring Kobe in on that, too. Okay. 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 And we're in the middle of doing homesteads right now. So far, I've done 11 of them. And so far, our Marion County residents have got $5,886 back from homestead. So it's just the beginning. I'm not doing, I not, will not be doing taxes this year because um, of the schooling. Plus, I do not have an assistant, so uh, we will not be doing taxes through the Department of Aging this year. We've been referring them to um, Harvey County Library. They can do those, but Marion County, uh, myself, won't, will not be doing simple taxes. But it is, we will be doing them next year, so that gives me time to learn, to take the tests, and get certified to do all that. And then um, I know with the this, this center being closed, all of our, our the sites that do Meals on Wheels have been closed for a week and a half. I did get a call this morning from a gentleman in Hillsboro, and he's hoping and praying that the centers open back up again because a lot of people rely on those friendship meals. And <clears throat> I take care of a lady on the weekends, and I went to figure out what was for supper and her refrigerator was empty. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, oh, that's, so, um, it's, I would like to talk to K-State, there are partners that do the friendship meals in Marion County, to see if this is a one-time thing, you know, it may never happen for 10 more years or could happen again next week, I don't know, but I just wish we could do more for the, our shut-ins that don't get out, that we could, and, and he said something about, well, it'd be nice, too bad we couldn't partner up with a hospital or something since, you know, we know they are cooking, it's too bad they couldn't, but then you have to figure out, well, who's going to pay for it, who's going to deliver the meals, so it's just... The delivery gets to be tough because people my age are doing that. Exactly. And we don't get around too good anymore. Right. Right. And we've had drivers that will not drive with no, this kind right, of... Right, So there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff that we have to take in consideration to get them to them. Yeah. Let alone after getting the meal, then yes. get to them. Get it to them. This year we had the the, the, the three punch. I mean, we had the, the snow, the wind, and the temp. Yes. Last year we had them all, but they were all separated. Right. So we had some snow at one point, and we had wind at other still point. And we still had a negative 30 wind chill last year because I called off Christmas. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we're just looking out after No snow. No snow. Ooh. But we had the wind and the cold temps because we had power outages and cold temps, and people were freezing in their houses. So. Uh, you, you know, you have a list of people that do that for you. Maybe, maybe we need to start looking at uh, a list that would be willing to do something in an emergency. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we know that some of them can't. Yes, and some of them want to, whatever we, they can yeah. do to help. Yes. You know, we have to even use our judgment when we're taking someone to the doctor's office. Sure. I mean, we've got this gentleman that goes to, to Newton for doctor's appointments, and we, we said, well, first of all, the roads were not clear, and then... Um, the roads are clear now, but his driveway, he can't safely get out into his driveway. So we're looking at his safety, getting into the van, so he canceled the appointment again. So we're going to move it out another week. So, you know, it's more than one thing, you know, looking at things. So we, safety of our people are more important. Yeah, because there are people that have to have, you know, chemo and dialysis yes. and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Can't miss too many appointments. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's all I have. Good luck with your Thanks. window project. 
Yeah. Oh. I just wanted to make sure. And so, I mean, if it's going to be $10,000, of course I'm not going to do it. <laughs> also, is there, a director has a discretion at, what, 1000 Yes, right, exactly. So, I do know that. So if you can get somebody quickly, mm -hmm. and it's under 1000 just as long as you know that, you can. Yes. Yep, I know that. Okay. Thank you very much for your Thank time. You. Thank you. Yep. I know probably cost eight hundred. You're probably not going to get it for under a thousand. What are you going to get done for a thousand? Yeah. <laughs> How much? Yeah, Tear something up, maybe for a thousand. Get a hole. With the sawzall hole. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sawzall job. Yeah. There you go. There's your hole. Yeah. Get a thousand bucks. See, they've put a bear cage around the stairs. For safety, I think. Hey, I don't see Gene here, so I'm not sure if he don't remember or if he's just. If he remembers all of a sudden after the meeting, you just have him send in a, a written. Okay. And I think we could just pass that on to everybody. That'd be best. And just be done with it. Sure. It's just an update. Um, was he going to come and request uh, assistance with the, you know, like they've done? He was just giving an update. Okay. Because usually every year we, we approve the assistance on the utilities. Right, which you had, um, done, I think, already for the budget for this year, so... Moving on to uh, county appraiser. I was watching and I heard you say Jean wasn't here, so I like. <laughs> um, Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, personal property renditions have been sent to Post Velocity. They'll be mailed the twentieth. Um, all the added and deleted items um, needed to be removed from the tax roll before that could be completed. Mike worked all the new, I think you guys signed all of them this morning. Yeah. Uh, Mike worked all the new ads. I worked all the removals and change orders. This took, sorry, I like, I really ran up the stairs. <laughs> um, it took like two to three weeks to complete. Um, nothing can be added or removed um, until change orders were opened back up. And that's after the clerk transfers the roll to the treasurer. So, not Michelle, and not somebody trained yet. <laughs> um, it, it takes a lot of time. Um, to answer your question on why, if we reduce the penalty um, and you have three change orders on one account, because they're all different subcategories. So, like a boat is separate. I just noticed some, some of them were like, they, yeah. there was one individual and they had five of them. Yeah, so and if it's a the large, next individual was five different sheets. So. If it's a large account, you have to do it for each assessment class and different property. Okay. So keep the lumber business in <laughs> We need to move, on to, we need to move on to DocuSign. <laughs> um, we currently have 72 real estate personal or sorry real estate payment under protest six personal property and eight oil and gas hearings um last year we had 31 so um Get more every year <laughs> ashlyn has set them all up that's about five full hearing days for me and two for brian and we currently have two days that we're rescheduling um, Last year we started them on the 4th, this year we started them today. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Brian had to take one of my hearings so I could come up here, but. Um, all that being said, we have requested, and it was approved, an extension for our valuation notices um, to go out March 15th instead of March 1st. Um, we are still, we only have 50% of our ag changes back from Sam or RNS from our mapping company. When in, she called me, I emailed them, I'm like, hey, you, you know, like, where, where are these at? Um, she said, oh, we'll have them to you by the end of January. 
I said, that doesn't really work. <laughs> Um, so she did agree to send them to me weekly at the end of the week for whatever they have done. Um, the goal is to try to still get them out March 1st. Um, DVD asks that an extension be filed as soon as possible. So we filed early just in case we needed that for these ag changes. Um, short staff and lack of trained staff also plays a role into this. They have to they have to be with the county for at least a year or have a year experience before they can value. Um, which Ashland her anniversary days is actually tomorrow. So and Lewis also hasn't been here a year. So we showed Shelby how the value so she's starting the value. Um I mean, losing Michelle is, that was a big hit for our office. But um, she did offer to value from home. So that was that sheet that you guys signed this morning. Um, she will take the rural township notebooks home, value those, and then bring them back, and they will be data entered in the office. How, how you, just a question. How will you value, has somebody already been out taking pictures, or...? How do you value without having paper, I mean, without seeing it? This is farmland, this is what this is, right? No, they're farm home sites. Home sites. So that it has the property, so in the notebook is the property record card and the comp sheet. Okay. So she has all the data to value it if she had a computer in front of her, too. Okay. So it's the same thing. If, I know she valued some over the weekend, so like properties that have more than one dwelling, she'll have to we flag all of them in the notebook. So she'll move the flag. So if she has any questions on them, she'll move the flag, and then Brian and I will look at them when they get back. So. And they've already done all their on-site work. Okay, well, that's, 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 that's my question. Yeah. We actually, we... You do have to see them. I mean, you've got <laughs> yeah. to see them. Yeah, all of, our seven, all of our reinspection and building permits are done for this year, so um, all the work is done. It's just valuing. Um, we haven't been out, want to be out last week doing it. No. <laughs> um, I think I kind of asked the timeline, so I did put it in my notes, but um, so once we finish valuing, we have like a week's worth of reports to run, and then Postalocity normally wants to file a week to two weeks prior to the mailing date. So that actually means we have to be finished valuing by the first week in February. Um, to kind of put that into perspective, to mail so by March 1st. Having all the changes by the end of January doesn't give them very much time. Right. Um, we're working, we're working hard. <laughs> we're working at home, we're working here. We were here yesterday. Um, I go home, make dinner, and I start valuing at home, so. You said you had to have one year experience before you could value. Do you have any employees that'll reach that threshold over the course of the year so you won't get in a bind again? Ashlyn and Lewis will have, I mean, Ashlyn's anniversary date is tomorrow. I don't know when Lewis is, is off the top of my is head. It consecutive? Is it consecutive year? I mean, days in a year? Or is it, is I would it have time to, served? I would have to read. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'd have to read. It's. I think yeah, it comes I from the director of PVD. They used to have to have IAAO course 100 before they could value, and I think they've changed that. Um, but neither one of them have that. The online course? Uh, it may offer it online, but I, it's in person. In person. Well, I'd have to. I would. There's just some things that I just. I can't agree with unless you're out there, you know what you're looking for and stuff like that. A lot of ours is, is in person and then to renew, you can do it online. Even if they have all that, they would still be slower than like, oh. you know, Brian or yeah. myself or Michelle who had six years of experience. <laughs> so. <laughs> You've been out there all summer doing it. Well, you ought to learn something by then, you know. Uh -huh. That's It just takes experience. You're not doing it. You ain't going to get out in this stuff and do it. <laughs>
I mean, we're still going to push to get March 1st, but if we don't have those ag changes back, it's going to be pretty hard. Right. That's it. So when we get that bad letter on you, well, then we know what it is then, right? I won't be out of compliance. Oh, okay. You won't be out of compliance. <laughs> you ever have any information? You said you're going to have you got 71, 71 appeals? Do you have any history behind appeals that those are actually successful? I mean, is it like 20% that succeed in getting their numbers lower or is it 30? I mean, maybe there's any of that kind of data around. I don't know. I mean, I could run them to see, like... Because, I mean, if it's like if it's like 3%, why would anybody ever appeal? Well, well I think protests. It's, yeah. It's, 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 they're, they're meaning to get to you, me, and... Randy. Yeah. Some of them definitely are not meant for our office, I would say that. <laughs> yeah, but they do that because they think that's a way to do that, and it's not. So uh, I will say the only thing our office control, a lot of people are like, my taxes are, are too high, but my value's fine. The only thing I can have control over is the valuation. Right, right. So uh, if the value's fine, then you're... It, and the taxes are too high, it's a mill levy issue. I did read in Harvard County paper yesterday or day before, their housing went up 13%, I think. Their business, yes. but their Didn't it happen here? How many? Uh, currently, we're, our index values in some area. I mean, we cap them. I don't know. So we do it individually by neighborhoods. Um, towns. Um, and then we do like overall for the entire county. So the overall county is 22%. So we're 22% lower than we should be. Um, some areas were higher than that, but we capped it at the overall at 22. Like the northern towns are, I think, eight, they were like 8%. And that's sale price versus our prior year value. 23 value versus 23 sales. So. I have no further questions. I don't want to go off it too far, but can I just put the, the uh, neighborhood revitalization. Mm -hmm. How many actually, how many do we actually have per year that actually fill out all their paperwork? And it's slowed down a lot. Um, gosh, off the top of my head, maybe between 10 and 20. Successfully completed. In each year, new ones, maybe, or is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just wondering because the only ones I get are the ones that didn't fill out their paperwork right, and they're now they're ticked. And if nobody's getting this thing, then, well, nobody. Then all, I, all I'm dealing with is a bunch of people thinking they had an opportunity that got I mean, feel like they got. You probably talked to the same person I did, but. We talked to a different They one. had no information on neighborhood revitalization until their project was done two years ago. Right. You know, and it seems to me like that the city clerk's office ought to be providing some of that stuff. Well, and, yeah, and so I, that's the only reason why I bring it up is because I'm getting people that are frustrated. And I never hear about the success stories. Mm -hmm. I, I only hear about right. the people that are upset because, they didn't work. well, you can't backdate this. No. Yeah, that's those are the ones I get, and and every one of them is all the same I send story. I ones to you guys because that's, that's it's right. out of my control and it's not and it's you know they don't take. But I'm wondering. No. <laughs> so I've never done it, never had it <coughs> and so I don't know the struggle. The I know that all of them have said they've come in the beginning that are upset about it. The other ones they I would just miss the boat, you know, but that are truly upset come in the beginning, and then somewhere along the line, they didn't fill out a piece of paper before the finish. Right. So. And so they thought that they were good, and then they found out that they weren't, and that's what upsets them. They, the cities, and I, I don't know this for sure, the cities may very well tell them. I'm not, I'm not there. I know Sharon sends a letter, and with their approved building permit. It's on all the tax bills, I believe, also. I'm just trying to think. Is there any any? I don't know that the we cities do are promoting it. Well, if we're going to keep doing it, let's let's talk about what Ken said, what you said, and 
what the same person probably called all three of us. Um, I think our county paper is guided on it, and we in our county paper when we have a county building permit. But these people don't look at the you don't look at the inside the city building permits till right. once we a year. We don't even get the some cities send them quarterly. Most okay. of them send them at the Indeed. end of the year. So. Okay. They could already have the project completed before our office ever even but sees it. That seems to be a big problem. Now, if somebody has done three buildings and done the fourth, then does the fourth one, you would think that they would have went ahead and filed for the fourth one. That's what happened with the one that I called you the other day. Yes. yes. And so that's, but I still go back to where the county and taking care of county building permits is getting a notification on the, that's where we decided to put it, was on that building application form yeah. to get it out there. So I've had one of those, and, and they kept all their receipts and everything, and then come to find out at the very end, they didn't, they didn't fill out a certain piece that was in. Correct. Correct, but at least we're getting it to them there. But now, if the city's is not getting that on the building permit, then where do we, how do we not consider something? Now, I think also Hillsboro is, did they, Tina, you may have to think on this one, and I'm not for sure, but didn't they opt out of some of our program of that? Well, some cities have their own. Okay. But yeah. it doesn't apply, it usually doesn't apply to every type of property. Like okay. sometimes it's just for commercial property. So they don't, you know, yes, so. Towns do different things. Right. So but everybody to... should be eligible for the county one unless they're doing the city one. Okay. I mean, if the, yeah, if the cities no, aren't providing them that information. Yeah. That's, that's the only well, we question I have. Yeah. That's, like that's you said, until maybe a year later. <laughs> so yeah. The only reason why I bring it up is there something that we could do that would make it more friendly if we're going to continue to offer. I mean, you guys used to approve them post construction and then. You guys cut that off, and so that's where I'm like, I no longer, I can't even yeah. take it to the commission anymore because they've said no more. Right. And I said, you know, the, the only thing you can do is call your commissioner and, and verify that information. Yeah. Can't. Uh, I yeah. think yeah. there yeah. could be more working yeah. with, the, with the city governments just to make sure that they're putting the information out there. I think that's something we can work on. I just wonder if, if, if there isn't a date process. So they came in and asked for a packet. Their name is on the list, so then they could be granted grace because they're not asking for it after. They're, they, they, you know their intent in the beginning. You would almost have to, I mean, you would almost have to change the way that the program reads because it's pretty, I mean, it's laid out. I, I mean, I wasn't here when it started, but there is a little leeway in the fact that I think you have 30 you can still apply within 30 or 60 days of the building permit. So even if it's post-construction, you can sometimes get them in if it's within that time frame of when the building permit was issued. But, you know, I think one of the ones I called, it was completed in the 2022. And, you know, they don't say anything until they get the tax bill. So then it, then you're almost a year well, I know from the building permit, sometimes, and these are typically buildings, but some buildings, you know, they'll, they'll knock them out in two weeks, depending on what your size of building you're doing. So, yeah. you've got the job done before the building permit ever comes. The biggest thing that yeah. they have is they have to make a determination of value before they start, <coughs> value after they start, correct? I mean, after it's if done. it's within the same year, we would be okay because the valuation wouldn't change until January 1st of the following year. So, okay, so now you're bringing up a little more to it. I just the valuation might change from one year to the next to the, the valuation that we set. So if they built something in the summer and got their tax bill in November, they're like, oh, I didn't know about the program. It's, that wouldn't work. Well, the only reason why I bring it up is if, if you can think of anything give us any pointers on what we could do to change. I mean, Kent and I talked and, you know, I was, was going to send an email to the cities. Um, I mean, that's really all I can yeah, can't do, do to promote it, it more. They should, they should have all of that 
Well, even even how how the thing is written, uh, uh, how how stringent it is on for the appraiser. Is there anything that we can do that still makes it to where it's not? Oh, I just found out about this program, but I finished my job four months ago. I had no intention of doing it until I found out about it. Not allow those, but still make sure that the ones that intended to, that came and got the paperwork, get a fair shot at it without being like, no, you missed a step. Well, then I guess if somebody wants to pick up a packet, fill out, put up, get a, make a spreadsheet or something and enter them. Date, date, time. Because they camp. they intend to do it. That's it's not like they're going backwards. And that way, uh, I could get some money. If you have that, you could go to them nine, ten, twelve months later and say, "Are you doing this, or have you done it?" Or, but her point just a second ago was, you have a deadline somewhere that if they if you accept it after that deadline. And you're talking that, budgets and everything else yeah, too. You're, you're talking, there's, there's a lot of stuff there. There's that, rules and regulations that you can't. I mean, you, you could accept it, but yet they're going to have to go back and change a whole heck of a lot of stuff, plus affect our budget and stuff like that. So, so there, it, it gets into that if they don't fall in the right guideline. Now, if they finish in, if they start one in October and finish it in February, then it's February of the year they finish it in, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can go through the year, but you wouldn't wouldn't fall back to the year before it would be in it's, that year. So. It's a totally confusing program that it seems like no one understands. Well, it's, <laughs> and, and, and part of it is because I have never done it. If, I, if I'm going to do something, I'm just going to do it. A few it. years ago, you brought up the idea of dropping it. Yeah, yeah. It's because it's well, we, biggest, the biggest thing is it's not. a problem with that, though, isn't there? No, the, there's no, no problem with no, dropping no problem it. it. No. <laughs> well, for the county side, we can well, drop it. <laughs> But if you got 20 success stories seen, per year. I haven't seen a city neighborhood revitalization plan in years. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if their plans are active anymore. Hillsboro's was like a 10-year. But if you came in on year eight, you only got eight, eight years. So my guess is Hillsboro's is done and over with. Um, but I don't. Well, yeah, I know. So I, know I will it say plays that heck on the budget because you always have to. You, okay, we're gonna get, we're gonna hit this mark, and then neighborhood you take this out. comes in and messes the whole thing up. it in twenty three, and they don't read it on their tax bill until the end of the year, and then we allow them into the program that's taking funds from. And I know this is budgeted, but you know, I don't, in the grand scheme of things, I don't know. I will say that if you decide to change the rules, you're going to have to adopt a new plan. Mm -hmm. And the new plan rules are different than the old plan rules. It's mm -hmm. um, the way that you would have to go um, um, allow everyone, the, every entity, the opportunity to opt in or out again. And then you would also, there is new, uh, there are laws that have been passed that any new plan is subject to um, the um, school capital outlay fund, there are some things that happen there, so it would be excluded from it, um, where in the old plan it's not ex excluded. So there's a lot that would be involved if you wanted to make changes. And so if you decide that you do want to make changes or cha you know change the plan or uh, offer a different new plan, that's going to take a lot more research and a lot more discussion before you would do that. So you'd want to schedule that as a work session, session or something. Okay. There was two reasons why that it was put into effect. Number one, there was a county commissioner that wanted all farmers to be able to put a farm building up and be able to get it. That was one. Number two, and the biggest one, was because at that time, everybody's fighting to get somebody to come to your county, and we still are, and we still want that. So it was sold as maybe this is another way to retreat, you know, retreat some, or see some customers coming in and people moving to our county and for that. So those two things was the two biggest reasons that I can remember that it was signed in uh, by a commissioner ahead of us, by, ahead of Dan and I. We, we come in when it was put forward and then we picked up at the tail end of it and finished it out. So, and has it, has it recruited any businesses in? So we did a survey of, of several years ago to try to determine of the participants how many of them would have built without it, and I don't remember the results of it. It's been a long time it wasn't ago. Impressive yeah. enough. No. 
probably pretty even on building with without it right now. Yes. Right now. Yeah. So. But a lot of counties have a neighborhood revitalization program, so I don't know that it's competitive. Well, and it is, I mean, competitive, it, but attractive. It can be a tool for community development, economic mm -hmm. development, if it's... I, I pursue, I, I'd rather pursue something within dollars or something that, that well, incentivizes I, them to come, that, that, to, to come in. Are the rules for setting those up, did they come th through the state or is that a federal? Um, I believe it's through the state. Yeah, I'll that too. But, but again, I wasn't there at the beginning of that either, so I'd have to... All right. I, w I think it would be worth it just to find out whether Marion has one, Hillsboro has one, anybody has one or not. Let's see if they still have, if they don't have, why... Well, we have all that information in our office. Yeah. Just to see just who has them still, and see whether they're still liable or viable. And, uh, I will say we do explain when they come in for an application or have questions, we do explain that the part one has to be filled out before construction starts. A lot of the times if you know, we have a newer employee, they won't even explain the program. They'll yeah. get Brian or myself or somebody that knows more about it. Right. Um, in the application itself, it does say that it has, that the part one has to be filled out before construction starts. So it is laid out in there how it's supposed to be so it has a checklist. Uh-huh. I just don't know why. It's, it's a struggle. I just... Well, I think the question from, from not the... being going through it myself, I don't It's usually, um, it's two, maybe three people a year. Once they get their tax bill, then they, then they question it. Yeah. And, um, you know, they see that note on there about, a rebate program yeah. or a refund program. And that then sparks they... them then, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's your answer on that. My question to the commission is, is I think you need, it's in, you, I don't know which one of you area uh, in Hillsboro, the, the person that talked to me was, was wanting to know whether they could fill out one. So I, I think we need to say either yay or nay, or we need to check it out, see whether we know that he, this person did two or three of the buildings three already. Buildings on prior. Three of them prior. Okay. And, and he did all that, right? That. Yeah. And so why didn't we do it? I mean, that's the biggest thing. You know, I have no. I asked, I asked them to call you because I knew yeah. you had a, right. a deeper understanding of it than I do. And I, I just want to be fair with the person. I don't have an application prior to. He did everything right on the first three and the fourth one. I don't have an application. Okay. And I look. You have a building application. We have a well, building permit, but building we do permit. not have a neighborhood revitalization. But that's through the city of Hillsborough, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. But he, I mean, he did have knowledge of the program and how it That's worked. That's the biggest answer. Oh, that, yeah. that was the questions on the phone to him was directly, why? Mm -hmm. And he got it. Okay. So it isn't something that the... But... Perceived. I, I looked. I looked through Ashlyn's desk and my, okay. my desk, and usually they're not on my desk except for when I sign them. But I looked all over for one, and I don't have. Well, what my question is to you then, if if we approved of this one, what would that do to everything else that we just talked about? Just a ripple effect. It, I, I, it I, wouldn't matter. But two weeks before that, we had someone else that did a remodel that would have qualified. So I mean, that's your ripple effect. Yeah, I don't think we can do that. I mean, we got to stick to the plan, and then we'll make a change. You got to make a change going forward, or, I mean, or nothing. Tina would know more how it would affect the budgets than I would. If, I mean, for us, it's that injury, but I mean, people's got to understand that there's. It's not. Is it finished? Yeah, it's finished. Getting close to finished. So would it be for twenty? Or would it be for 23, this building that we're talking about? It will go... Whenever it's completed? Or when the yeah, building... The building's is completed, it's just being finished right now, I think. Yeah, it'll go on for 24. 24. So it wouldn't mess with last year's. So, so he, he could still do it for 24? Yeah. Isn't it by com would it have to be complete before January 1st of 24? 
It is currently complete. Oh. Um, I mean, that's up to you guys, but then you have the other person We'd who's like finished. And I think that you, you took an action to, to kind of stop doing those special considerations, and I think you had done it for a reason because it wasn't necessarily the objective and fair for everybody when you... Uh, I know I've told other people, oh, they've made this decision and we can no longer... And I typically say you can call your commissioner. I think I think we need to stick with that. We took that. Act. I was here for that action, so I know. Um, I think we can probably do a better job communicating with the cities and asking them to cooperate with us on. I'd love to see it on the building forms, just like ours. Yeah. I mean, because that puts it right there in front of them. If they don't fill it out, then that's their their problem. That's what we try to get. But it's like you said, are they even they involved in the neighborhood? I just took for granted that at least probably the three biggest towns in the county were. I don't know. I'm going to thank you for your information. Yeah, um, I, uh, I will talk with the chairman and see if a work session is in our best interest on this topic. Okay. That's a, a, actually that's my thought is to to give Nikki and Tina three or four weeks, whatever it takes, get the information, come back. If the commission wants to revise the current plan, or if they just want to do away with neighborhood revitalization. Mm -hmm. Uh, to make that decision once all the information's gathered. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Voice so, from above is spoken. I, I do have a question. I do have a question because Brad's not present today. Um, one commissioner asked if he could be available by phone. So if there are things that you need to discuss with him, I think he potentially could be available um, shortly. So I would just need to know an approximate time. All I know is he he said to contact him if we need him. So I don't know. Okay, that's what I'm trying to find out is if you need him. Oh, for <laughs> so, Brad? Yes. Yeah. I think he would, uh, in part of that that we added to the agenda, it'd be nice if he was in on that. Uh, the blizzard part. Okay, the blizzard part. Okay. Uh, basically, your, your, your yeah. executive session. Yeah, that's just personnel performance between us, okay. board, and uh, Tina. Okay. So. So we want to move right into the blizzard part. Oh, no, Gene's here. Yeah. Gene's here. We can get past you. I, I seen that I was on here at 115. Yeah, we skipped and, past you. And when I made the appointment the other day, they told me 145. So I could have been here earlier than that, but. You know what, Gene? We'll we'll accept you. Just any okay. way you come. All right. All right. I, I told Tina if you didn't show, just to get a, a written report from you, and we'd be done. We'd yeah, be yeah. Well, this isn't going to take very long. Okay. I just wanted to. I printed this report out at the year end. Um, we keep track of everybody that comes in and out of the food bank up there. Uh, plus, we keep track of how many people from each town uses the food bank. And the, and the total number of pounds that went through it. So you can see up at the top, uh, we had 4,096 households use the food bank. Now that's, they can come twice a week. Uh, if they start on Mondays, you know, in two weeks, they can come back or Thursday, they can come back. But we had that. And, and if you take the total of all of them in the family, we serve 10,258 people this last year and you can see at the starting of the year back in January February and up through there the numbers and as we get further into the year here how it's increased quite a bit uh, the middle deal there is you can just look through that um, each town and and the number of people that are coming to the food bank the bottom area there is the total number of food that goes through the food bank there, or through, through our food bank. And you, from the Wichita food bank, you can see we received 107,007 pounds of food uh, this last year. We purchased from Carlson's 26,453 and so forth. And I go over to the side there, you can see 170,115 pounds of food on it. 
This the bottom one's all pounds, right? Pounds. Of yeah, this lower left hand corner is yeah. all pounds. Yeah. You can see what we got from churches, business people, individuals, and super groups, and and uh, we've had some nice donations from uh, people bringing us food. Uh, Farmer up north has a uh, cattle place in Lincolnville uh, has brought us. 2,000 pounds of beef in the last wow. month, you know, uh, when they butcher and so forth. And there's other people in town that have done that too, you know. So uh, it's been a good year. Uh, and and if you if you look at the numbers here on the the kite the numbers of the expenses and income, you can see that we are a nonprofit. We spent ninety dollars and sixty seven cents above the amount that we got in donations for the year. And so... That's running a pretty tight ship there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we, we did have uh, insurance in there for two years because the way it worked out, we paid last year in January and we paid this year in December. So, I mean... It's like a little bit. Five, yeah, five thousand dollars a year is about what the insurance runs on mm -hmm. on the building up there. So, but we did have those two in there, and we did purchase a couple of new freezers, uh, two door freezers. Right now, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven freezers, and and uh, four refrigerators, double door refrigerators up there, just to be able to. Uh, keep the amount of food, and it and it's it's worked out good because sometimes when when this one farmer brought this, he brought 1,276 pounds of beef, you know, in two pound packages, and so it takes up a lot of freezer space, and so a couple freezers just for that. Yeah, you betcha. And uh, you know, we do appreciate you guys helping us with the utilities and so forth. And, I can answer any other questions. I'd be glad to. If not, I'll just get out of your air and let you continue. Well, you guys was the leaders probably in, in a lot of the food bank, but there's food banks in other towns now, too. I mean, besides just Marion. Yeah. And so one in Peabody and one in Hillsboro. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of people out there that needs help. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean. <laughs> but the thing that bothers me, though, Gene, is is in an out insurance five thousand dollars a year to i mean which is not very much in the realm if somebody falls and gets hurt and, yeah. but you got to have that on the building well that's on the building and everything yeah, yeah. and yeah. so so there's everything takes insurance every every little board takes insurance and it's it, insurance expensive for yeah, it is. small boards and yeah. things what, what what have we been paying for Utilities. Utilities. Yes. Yeah. And that's probably going to go up too. Well, you've been given 6000 and you can see that this last year, already over $6,860 was our actual expense on the utilities. So. But you're adding two more freezers, so that means that expense is going to come up. <laughs> yeah, but then you run into a month like this and oh, their yeah. electric bill will be out of sight. Uh -huh. Or gas bill. Gas bill, yeah. electric bill, everything. And I might, yeah. one other thing, <clears throat> in the paper, they was talking about this last snowstorm with no place for uh, people to stay and so forth. Uh, you know, that building has got a generator in it, and we got heat in it and so forth. You know, it could always be used. Be a warming center or whatever. Well, we got uh, two heaters in it, yeah. you know. And, and, of course, we wouldn't have no beds or nothing, but... Still, it would be oh, get out of the get out of the yeah get out of the cold and place to stay if they had to wait for somebody to come and get them or someplace. Could your food area be completely locked off? No. no. Well, the city the city has the city building that they yeah. open up for a warming shelter. They op like they made it available with the cold temps. They don't necessarily open warming centers for just snow or people sliding yeah. off the road. But when disasters. But when, but when it's extreme really extremely yeah. cold temperatures and if somebody's if the power goes off, things like that. I know Gossel and and 
uh, Marcy with emergency management was working with all the city here and with Gossel and other cities to have those resources available should they be needed during the yeah. extreme cold. So I know they have a place here in Marion. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, it's but there. It's available. How long has it been since we've raised your utilities to six thousand to what we paid? It's always been that. It's always been six thousand. Yeah. yeah. Do we need to raise it to seven thousand or seventy five hundred? Already this year, they'd have to come in and ask during that time to yeah. for it to be increased. Just like uh, well, I mean, we acted on it at one time at six thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. And last last year, we just come in and. And give you this report, you know, and then we received a check on it for that. I so. guess if you think you need more, come in and ask for it. Well, yeah. You just hope the donations keep coming. Yeah, December was very good on donations this year, which is the only thing that that helped us out to get through the year because we had a, a several fairly sized donations for us. So. The food food inflation is. Is the highest part of inflation that we deal with. Oh yeah, and we can tell that. You know, with the amount of food that we that we bought, uh, eggs and milk, cheese. You know, we buy all that from Carlson's here, and you can see we uh, twenty six thousand four hundred and fifty three dollars we spent with uh, local stuff. Bought a total of eighty thousand five hundred and forty-four dollars in food from the food bank, and but at this point, you never had to turn anybody away because we're out of food. No, no, we've never done that. So, and we had a food truck that, that was supposed to be here from the food bank today, and they called and said they couldn't get their truck started. <laughs> I believe that. And so uh, they're coming tomorrow instead. Oh, at least the so. reefer unit doesn't have to work too hard when it's pulling down the road. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. Don't even turn it on. <laughs> Just open the vent. Well, thank you, Gene. All right. Thanks. My refrigerator and my garage. Everything. <laughs> mine's mine's just keeping it thawed at this point. All righty. Move on to the the blizzard landowner participation conversation prior to the executive. So do you want to try to contact Brad for this? I think this, so. If, he's on, if we can. If he'll answer, fine. If not, I guess we'll just bring it up and then bring it up again next time we meet. Well, mine doesn't really need Brad, so I'll just go ahead and start. But I really want to thank some of our local farmers, ranchers that had equipment. Uh, I got notified by a few of their neighbors on who actually assisted them to get out in their time of need before Greater could get there. I've got, really a, wanna, I've got a list of names also. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, you, I'm not gonna list the names because I know no. I don't have all of them. No, I, I just have the ones that were brought to my attention and, and some of them bailed me out uh, trying to assist Road and Bridge. Um, and uh, a vehicle that was, two vehicles that were blocking the road from the grader going down, uh, the grader that was stuck. Um, and Road and Bridge just going the extra mile working. And some of the people I know probably struggled to see how much effort was put into it, but there was a lot of effort. I mean, it was, I was out there for two days, either working on generators or helping where I could. And the drifts were high, graders are getting stuck, graders are getting broke. They worked all the way through the weekend. They they worked the holiday and just tried their darndest to, to, to make it where you could survive. And one of, one, of, one of my questions to Brad would be, you know, this was kind of a you know, just call him. He's a big historical big. effort. Can't. And He's available. Can call Brad. So uh, you, I can just call him. Well, in. I just to call him in, but I can wait. You want to get him? Okay, but you said a question for Brad. Yeah. So do you I've want? Had, to I've, had, I've had several 
that I have texted him. You want that? Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, if you just want to bring them up, and then we could decide if that's a, an issue we want to. I don't care. That, that, unless you need okay. legal advice on what you're about okay, to Okay, I'll give you my two. Uh, number one, this, you know, we, the, we got all of this uh, extra, extra compensation pay. What, is there any way in an emergency, especially for road and bridge, we can pay some overtime. We've talked about these things before, but this was kind of historical and complicated, and some of these guys have put a ton of hours in. I'm just wondering about some type of emergency overtime pay. You have you have done it before at for certain things um, in yeah. different departments, I mean, and this, so this, this is kind of a historical storm. I mean, it's even named. This storm is even named. And I really, I really think it would be appreciated by those that went, went, went up, you know. And that would probably include the whole road and bridge as far as that goes. You couldn't just single out these two blade men and these two blade men for the context of what was going on, because I think everybody was on call. And if they were if they were working, I would I would certainly be in favor of emergency overtime pay for them through through today anyway. And the next the, the next item, of course, Jonah knows knows about it too. We've had a number I don't even know what the number is, but it's a number of, of large equipment owners, I won't say large farmer, rancher, whatever, large equipment owners, those that had big four-wheel drive with dozer blades, were out assisting three, four days anyway. Uh, one individual I know of had, through today, through yesterday, gone through 700 gallons of diesel fuel. That's well, taking, it, taking that at the farm rate diesel, you're $2,500 worth of diesel fuel, and that doesn't yeah. count the wear and tear. Yeah, on the equipment. Now, I know, how do you qualify Sorry. those individuals to reward them some way? That was my question to Brad, that he'd be thinking about that. I didn't say pay, I said reward. Yeah, she got him on the phone. Right? He's on the phone. Okay. He just called in, so... Maybe you want to repeat that. Brad, you on there? I am. Uh, any, any other thought when, in regards to that text that I sent you about somehow being able to reward some of these landowners that went above and beyond to help our road and bridge out? Yeah, I mean, it's possible for a, a governmental entity to go ahead and do these to some type of a stipend. It has some complexity at times to it because we don't want to associate it as an agency relationship. So it's an independent contractor form of a uh, deal. And it's it also depends upon whether it's a token or if we're trying to compensate them fairly for the time they spent, you know, as to what we do and how we do it. And then whether we do some form of 1099s or, you know, different types of things. So it, it has a bunch of what ifs. Uh, is it the, the short form answer? Is it possible to do? Yes, um, and, and I've done it before. Um, but you know, you do have to kind of check off uh, a number of boxes to be sure you don't get yourself into a situation where you're having an association with all of these different individuals that you're not necessarily planning for. Is a token a 1099, or can a token be without a 1099? Um, I'd have to ask our accountant for that purpose. Tina may know as well, but okay. generally, anytime we pay them, uh, you know, it just depends if it's significant at all. Uh, I normally will suggest we do the tax statement element of it, but uh, you know, it's uh, if, if it's like uh, gift kinds of things, and there again, with a governmental entity, that's tough to justify. So, I think. I don't want to say that I don't want to thank them somehow, but I, I think that we, if we could both get something out of those dollars spent, we, we, we would put ourselves in a better position and also 
show our gratitude. <clears throat> With um, more of like a, a commitment for rock or, or something. That, that way it goes into our infrastructure. Those dollars spent are not just given away to something else that, that the county gets no benefit. I mean, and, other than the next no storm. And, and I, but, I, I totally agree with that, but I know what's going to happen. Why are, you, why are you doing this for him and not doing it for us? Because we're a taxpayer. We're on the road two miles down from him. I mean, I, the concept is right and good. It's just I think you're going to, it's just going to cause, I think it might cause more ill will than good. Well, I know we need to get I, the right. I'm going to agree with I'm going to agree with Commissioner Gehring. Uh, I've talked to dozens of, of farmers who've been out opening their roads. They don't want to get paid. They want croc. That's what they're telling me. They're, they know what's coming. And in a few weeks, this is going to start melting, and it's going to be bad. I mean, it's going to, you think the snow's bad. When it melts, well, you guys have been through it with the floods, the 100-year floods. Yeah. And you took extraordinary measures, and they were greatly appreciated. Well, the first few days but it, it, it snowed. It, it, I I was out in it, and it underneath it was it was a wreck. Mud. It was a wreck yeah. already, and it sat like that for days until it froze, until they got the snow off, which took time. But now some of it is froze, freeze dried. But as soon as it gets wet, it's it's going to be bad. Okay, but then if we say you know off the top of our head. These are the guys we know did this. You're going to get a whole bunch more saying, "Well, I did two miles. I did three miles." You're going to you're going to be covering the whole county, and I'm, I'm afraid we're going to. Well, at some point we'll have to. I don't know what you're thinking, Tina. Well, I just think that if you need to be very careful, and Brad, correct me if I'm wrong, about um, providing rock based on someone's actions. Yeah, yeah. You know, because that, I mean, you could do a, you could do a, a charitable donation receipt that might, a tax receipt that might help them with their taxes if they, if they put money into, you know, doing yeah. a lot of this work. But if you do, if you make somebody getting rock contingent upon whether they help somebody or not, I think that you could get into trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the only way we could even begin to do that is an in kind kind of a thing. And usually we would make that arrangement beforehand. You know, I mean, no different than what we do when we get a grant in some instances and we match labor. Um, you know, there are ways that you can have private citizens get involved with governmental entities that way and bring it into our structure, as Jonah was suggesting. But um, it's just complex, and you're already anticipating a lot of the things I would have mentioned uh, that seem to come up in cases like that and will never please everybody. I mean, I, I think the county maybe needs to commit to a, a putting rock out anyway, but I, I think you can, it's going to be really tricky to try to. I think we'd be all be in, in favor of yeah, associated with those particular individuals. Charitable tax receipt, how would you determine that? Or as a value? Did yeah. you, can you hear Ken? They'd have to bring in receipts. I, no, I didn't. I got it. Kind of broke up there. I'm sorry. So what he asked was if if you did decide if the county wanted to provide like a tax receipt for somebody that had done work uh, or helped, um, how would you develop that? Ultimately, it's it would be just that it's kind of a uh, a, a receipt, and basically we would probably well no we wouldn't somehow we would develop what is a, an average figure. For that kind of thing and, and we can provide it to them it looks a lot like the concept that you have when you go to uh, salvation army or goodwill and you drop off a couch and they give you a receipt for that they don't necessarily assign a value to it the individual does uh, they're the ones responsible for it if they're audited but you know we can acknowledge the action they went ahead and did this and if they specify i did two miles and you know uh, spent three hours of my time um, you know, they can, two miles. they can go ahead and put something in there if they wish. Two miles would have been 10 hours. Yeah. It was bad. It was really heavy snow. Yeah, crazy. Greater took an hour sometimes. Well, I think we need to do something and, you know, 
at least that would be an acknowledgement and have some type of material value, monetary value, to them, yeah. depending on their tax situation, of course. But yeah, it might be a help to some people. For others, it wouldn't. Yeah, some would be a great thing, and others it wouldn't. Another way, if you did decide to pay a stipend, you know, have an application that people fill out and yes. you could do something like that. Um, you could potentially do something out of risk management for something like that if it was disaster related, which you all did do a, a disaster declaration. And so this would the stipend be... They would have to apply for it. And would that be limited to a figure that we approve? I mean, you'd have to div figure out what and that is. It could also be limited to a maximum figure because I'm not sure yeah. how much some of them get. You know, and there's only so far you're going to go budgetarily, I suspect, before it becomes a real drag on your overall, right, right. you know, budget on it. So is there, on a, a charitable tax receipt, oh, hold on. I'm just going to bring this over here. <laughs> Brad, on a charitable tax receipt, is there any maximum? Yeah, we could. We could set it so that, you know, we're going to allow or acknowledge someone's uh, efforts um, up to and including the following, you know, amount. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and again, it really isn't, it doesn't have to be something that's so strident on our part because this is really something they run through their individual they're the ones it's asserting how much they're applying for. And we, if we want to, can say, you know, we would uh, certainly provide that kind of an acknowledgement of your your contribution up to so and so many dollars and specify that. That doesn't impact our budget quite as bad. Oh, well, yeah. No, I mean, I think it's, like you said, it'll be helpful to some and maybe not at all to others, but we got to acknowledge this somehow and come up with something that can be of a... Well, most of them all have a business. So if they get a tax... It's probably, right gonna, it's probably going to impact to help. Yeah, it don't, it, they, that's why businesses do it. I mean, I mean I, I'll make a $1,000 donation just so I get the extra $75 taken, so I get $1,075 when I, when I go to use that deduction. That's yeah. 75 bucks. Yeah. You know, but I gave the thousand up. Yeah. I think maybe that's something. This is maybe that's a good place to start. I don't know. I mean, I I, I don't disagree with that. You're going to need rock for sure, but I just think that trying to make that contingent on who was helping and who wasn't is going to be even more difficult than trying to figure out a proper way to thank people. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, is there some kind of a document that we would have to uh, prepare to do that, Brad? Yeah, there, at least I have done it in the past, uh, and it is in the form of a receipt. It has certain recitations in it. We'd probably want to create some type of a small, um, you know, not terribly complex uh, application form so these people come in and if someone looks at it and says, heck, I just did it because I'm a good person, I don't want anything from you guys, well, they make that decision up front and don't apply. So would we have to I issue a 1099 or a 1098? Give the opportunity to get it. Excuse me? I said that, that way you'd, you know, you'd give it the opportunity to get it. So. But I mean, would you issue that at the same time that you would issue the tax receipt? Yeah. Make the IRS happy. <laughs> so the eight thousand agents don't come after you us. You done with Brad? Yeah. Thank, thanks, Brad. Yeah. Hey, Brad. Yeah, I don't have nothing for you either, Brad. I'll just I'll take this back to Tina, or she's coming over to get it. One of the two. Should we direct him to? to should we direct him to try to put together a document? No. Do nothing. Um. Not, let's think on it a week and okay. do that. I just see if Tina could bring us back some suggestions. Something. Yeah. All right. Okay, I think that was it, Brad. Thank you. Okay, you bet. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. I, uh, I'm still on the blizzard. Uh, I'll, I'd like to, what, does Keith or Kent and 
Jonah's talking about is great, and I, uh, I don't think we know how to thank anybody enough for the situation we've been in, because when people's calling, still looking for us for our graders and things, and they haven't got there and stuff, or they've been there once and it's already back shut again. Why, you know, they did it two or three times to. You know, and, and I realize these are these are things that have been done for the last hundred yeah. hundred years now. Yeah. But we do live in a little bit different culture than we did 60 years ago. Also, when everybody was digging each other out. In 20 years' time, too, you, you wind up with equipment that's kind of like the bow mag. We don't use that anymore. Yeah. And it goes away. Well, we don't get snow anymore. That equipment all went away. It, it, I'm not going to say it's unprecedented. Yeah. I'm just saying it's not the norm. Yeah. And so what I was saying earlier, people up north, they're all geared for it. They've got big snow blowers that mount on the front of tractor loaders. They've got things. They have, have to be able to get there. They use it year after year. Yeah, they have to so get it's, there. It's not unprecedented. It's just not normal anymore. My comments that I'd like to express to the public, this is from the greater operators that I've heard this from, some of the truck drivers that's driving our trucks with blades on them. Uh, please, please, when you're facing one of our graders, or a state truck or a county truck coming at you, please take the time to either make room, pull over and wait for them, or let them completely stop, then go around. But we're hearing lots of complaints of some of our drivers that's not giving the machine operators a break. And just, folks, you don't know, when you're going 30 miles an hour out there in that snow, it can throw you in the ditch just as quick. So I mean, we it just give our give the equipment operators a break. That's all I'm asking and for. Stop heard, and think. And what I've heard is the equipment off wherever then potentially has to pull over too far, and then they're stuck. And then they're stuck. Yeah. And we've had to have the dozer. we've had to have dozer out pull some things. Yeah. And then that takes hours. Hours and stuff. And so. Please, and we understand everybody's got a place to go and a time to get there and stuff, but please take a little, this takes a lot of extra time to get somewhere from in this kind of weather, and please uh, please acknowledge our, if, and that could be the ambulance, and it could be the cops, the police departments, uh, county patrolmen, and stuff like that. So I just thank you for listening, and just talk it over and think it over, because these people are out there risking their lives too, so. One, one final thing I'd like to touch on, since I did go pull out a few vehicles that were in the way of the grader, <clears throat> I had no idea who this car belonged to. And, a, and the county, if anybody's got a belief that the county's going to pull you out, that's a liability waiting to happen. Yeah. We, we can't be hooking on to people and pulling them out. We're not a big government here right. to save you. The, but if you have to, have to abandon your vehicle, Please leave a name or a phone number so that one of us good Samaritans are out there trying to help out no know who call. to call and whose car that is so we can so we can get it out of the way so the greater could do your road. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I'm done. Yeah, I'm I'm done. Everybody else is I all right. Think, I think we need to, you know, not only thank Road and Bridge, but Sheriff Department, EMS, oh, yeah. emergency management. Everybody was mm -hmm. back against the wall. Yeah. Had a big fire in Lincolnville yesterday, and a lot of departments there. Uh, it goes to people that work at the courthouse too, making a judgment call. Yeah. Not to add extra vehicles out there while they're trying to clean the roads. We. They, they, that was a good call. Anyway. Um, One executive session, the personnel performance and just the board and Tina. Nobody else has to be here. No decisions either. Let's make sure we do this right here. <laughs> oh, I wanted to get, keep your knowledge. Well, okay. I want to make sure Feisty over here doesn't rent me out. <laughs> I move that we recess an executive session in order to discuss um, personnel matters, personnel performance of non-elected personnel, number one, 
uh, for... Is this to discuss the specific job performance of an individual? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, for 10 minutes with the board and Tina and Dave, you can call in online and that would be from 12th or 2.30 240 today. I'll give you about a four minute break here to get everything set up with open session to resume back at 4, 240 in this room. I make that motion. Second. Second by Jonah. All, All those in favor? Aye. 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 We'll be back at 240, but no, no decisions to the press. Okay, we're on. Out of executive session, no action taken. Uh, is there any other business need to come to the All right. With that, next meeting is the 22nd. At 12.30. At 12.30. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Got a motion to adjourn, a second. Uh, I guess I'm not going to take any discussion on that. And all in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned at 12, uh, 2.42.